So uh, then we are ready to start on a new topic. And uh, well, we have already seen uh, models, in particular the EOQ model or Wilson's formula, which is to be used when we have a fixed or so-called deterministic demand. You know the demand rate, which is more, more or less stable over time. Uh, now we will look at uh, models uh, which also takes the uncertainty into account. So we will look at the topic in, uh, described in chapter 5 in the textbook, inventory control subject to uncertain demand. Uh, we assume that we know some kind of average demand rate or expected demand rate, and we also know something about the variation, but the demand is not fixed. We, we do not know exactly how much we will uh, sell next period. Uh, so we need to also now account for this uh, uncertainty. Uh, and as we uh, have seen earlier, we, the models can be, uh, uh, well, for, for the fixed or deterministic demand situation, we will have a situation which looks like this. We will order a certain amount, and then we will have a fixed demand rate, and then when we reach zero, we will order, uh, place a new order of the same amount. Oh, and the angle of this demand curve will always be, uh, be the same in this uh, particular situation. Now, still the demand rate will be, uh, well, well the average demand rate can be shown like this, but we will have some kind of variation. So in uh, practice, we will might have something like that. Not so much demand here, and then certainly lots of demand, and we have some kind of variation around this uh, uh, expected demand. Um, the strategy here will be more or less the same. We have to find out when we should place a new order, and when the order is received, we, should, uh, we will raise the level of the inventory. And again, we will have a new cycle which behaves a bit different than the first cycle, but still around this expected uh, demand rate. Uh, what is more important now is when you have a lead time, which means the, the time between you are placing an order and you receive the order, you need to account for this uncertainty. In the fixed demand situation, this is quite easy because when the lead time is uh, uh, is uh, this uh, certain amount of, of time, then when we know about the, the fixed uh, when we have the fixed demand situation, it's easy to calculate this point, which is called the, the reorder point. And when we reach the reorder point, we have to place a new order to account for the demand in the lead time. But now we have uncertainty here. We don't have a fixed demand, we have a variable or uncertain demand. And then we should, uh, to avoid or to reduce the risk of a stockout, we should include something here, which is called the safety stock. So, and of course the size of the safety stock will decide uh, how much chance there will be for, for a stockout in, in that particular cycle. So this is now the difference between the fixed or deterministic uh, demand situation and the uncertain or stochastic demand uh, situation. That you need to account for the uncertainty and then you should have some kind of safety stock at the bottom here, uh, which is to prevent the risk of, uh, uh, of getting a stock out. Uh, also, in the uncertain demand situation, we are talking about two different type of problems. We have what we call the single period problem. And we also have what we call the multi-period problem. Uh, 
Uh, and this is uh, an example on what we call a multi-period uh, problem. You can store inventory from one period to the next. Uh, the single period problem is what I will uh, first uh, uh, present here in, in a short while. Uh, this is also uh, known as uh, what we call the newsboy or news vendor problem. A typical example is a newspaper. If you have a newspaper, you will have to sell it on the same day as the newspaper uh, is printed because no one will, will buy it the next day. So for a people, uh, so some people uh, selling newspapers, they will have to decide how many newspapers should they order at the beginning of each day. And of course, newspapers are quite uncertain. Sometimes it will sell very much. Sometimes it will sell not so much. So you have, uh, you have uncertainty. You don't know exactly how many newspapers you will sell. But you know how much you will sell on average. And you also know <laughs> something, if you have studied the historical data, you know something about the, uh, the distribution of the uncertainty or the probability uh, distribution. So here, this is the difference between the single and the multi-period uh, uh, uncertain or stochastic uh, problem. For the single period, you need to decide how many uh, items or how many uh, units you should uh, buy of that item at the beginning of the period, and you need to sell everything that period. Otherwise, you will have some kind of loss because you will not, uh, you're not able to store it to the next uh, uh, period. You might get something back uh, in, in some situation, but not as much as, uh, as you are buying uh, uh, or, or the cost of, of buying that uh, product. So. Uh, also here, something about the nature of uncertainty, because here we are talking about the exact or the demand which you will have, which uh, consists of a deterministic or fixed part and a random part. And the deterministic part can be shown by the straight line here. And then the random part might be positive or negative, will decide about the deviation from the fixed, uh, fixed line from the expected demand here. Uh, and of course, if the random components is small compared to the deterministic component, then the models for chapter 4 are quite accurate because you have a very close to a, a deterministic situation or a situation with a fixed uh, demand. But if this random uh, part is uh, well, rather uh, significant compared to the deterministic one, then you need to also account for uh, the uncertainty. So, here we are talking about two different types of probabilities. The one probability is the probability for, uh, or the probability density function, which might be uh, interpreted as the probability for a certain outcome, which here is the small f. And we are also talking about a cumulative probability distribution, which is the capital F here, which is the probability of an outcome, which is at most one certain uh, value. So if you have a probability for the outcome of zero, probability for the outcome of one, and probability for an outcome of two, each of them denoted with a number in the small f function, the probability density function, then the cumulative probability will be the sum of all these up to that particular number. So the cumulative probability of 2 will be the sum of the exact probability of 0, exact probability of 1, and exact probability of 2. How probable is it that this amount will meet the, the exact uh, demand for, for that, uh, that period? So. Uh, we can look at one example from the textbook in page 253. And here we are given 52 weeks in one year, and you have a weekly magazine. Uh, the product is a weekly magazine. And this is quite similar to a newspaper uh, situation, because also a weekly magazine uh, uh, will 
well, it will be actual to, to sell it in the same week as, as it is uh, 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 as it comes out. Uh, but you might also get something back if you store it because weekly magazines are not news like uh, like newspapers. So you might have some interesting uh, inter uh, articles uh, anyway, which someone uh, are willing to uh, to pay for. So you might get something back. But if you are not selling it within the same week, then you might lose some money, but maybe not all. So in this case, we are given the values uh, as the purchase price, which is uh, 25 cents in this uh, <coughs> problem. So the P value here is 0 0.25. That is how much you will pay as a, as a vendor of, uh, uh, of newspaper or uh, uh, as a seller of, of newspapers from, uh, from a store or anything. So you will pay to the publisher of, of this um, weekly magazine, 25 cents for each unit. You will sell it. Sales price is 75 cents, which means that you have a profit of 50 of each of these magazines if you are able to, to sell them. Uh, and if you are not able to sell them, you might return them to either the publisher or to some store who are dealing with the uh, with all the magazines and books and, and so on. Uh, uh, and you might get here a what we call the return price, uh, which is called the uh, would, uh, what about the unsold units. And then you might get 10 cents back. I think the return price here is 0 0.10. So this is the, uh, well, the values in this uh, uh, in, in this problem for this particular weekly magazine. And in this example, we are given a table of demand every week last year, so we have the history. And we should no now try to analyze this, uh, uh, this historical data and try to find out well, kind of probability and expected uh, sales and, uh, and different uh, other conclusions from the historical data. So. By looking at this table, we can now try to draw a, what we call a frequency histogram, the number of times of each possible outcome. And here, one possible outcome is zero. You're not selling any uh, of these magazines one week. And that happened actually one week in, uh, in the previous year. So here, the frequency histogram for zero, the outcome of zero, not selling any, is uh, giving a value of one. Uh, but the situation of selling either one, two, or three didn't happen at all. But in some weeks, you sold four units of this uh, weekly magazine. And that happened in three of the 52 weeks. So here, we can draw a histogram here at four, which actually has a value of three. This is one, this is three. And similar, we can continue. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we stop there. You don't have to draw everything, but the book that you have the histogram for all possible outcome. Uh, one week, you sold five items, so then you will have one here. Two weeks, you sold six, two, and also two weeks, you sold seven. In four weeks, you sold eight magazines, and in six weeks, you sold uh, nine magazines. So here, four, you sold eight, and six, you sold nine, and so on. We can do that for all possible outcomes, which here has a maximum uh, of 22, which is the most, uh, most um, uh, examples of, of these magazines you have sold in any week last year. And now we can try to analyze this, because 
if we are looking at the distribution functions here and we will well, at least we so far we will assume that we will ha have exactly uh, this degree probability will also continue next year. Um, so we will assume that uh, the probability of an outcome of 0 is 1 divided by 52. It happened in 1 out of 52 weeks. Probability of an outcome of 4 happened in 3 out of 52 weeks and an outcome of 9 happened in 6 out of 52 weeks. So here we can show the probability distribution function with an outcome of 9, which is 6 divided by 52. Happened in 6 out of 52 weeks, which is approximately 11.5% probability. And we can do similar for all the other possible outcomes. Um, we can also try to find the cumulative probability of 9, which means a capital F of 9 uh, means that this is the probability of getting an outcome which is not larger than 9. It will be 1 out of 52 weeks where you have no sales at all. And then you have none, 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 so that's 0. And then you have 3 weeks with a sales of 4, 1 week with a sale of 5, 2 with a sale of 6, uh, 2 with a sale of 7, 4 with a sale of 8, and 6 with a sale of 9, divided by 52. And this, if you sum all these together, you find out that in 19 of the 52 weeks, you had a sale which was either 9 or lower of this magazine. 19 divided by 52, which was approximately 36.5%. So this is now the difference between the probability functions here, the small f means the probability of one particular outcome, while the capital F means the probability of the, or what we call the cumulative probability, or, or the probability of getting a result, which is not higher than that particular number. <coughs> uh, okay, we should also try to repeat something from uh, statistics, which we, you hopefully, um, have uh, learned uh, earlier, but we need to, to repeat, uh, because the, uh, we are talking about the expected demand and also about the variance or the standard deviation in a statistic distribution. And in this case, we can find the expected demand, which is the denoted like this. Uh, also in statistics, this is also using often using the Greek letter mu as the, the symbol for the expected demand. And in this case, we can find out that the expected demand is the average sales for all the weeks. On average, between these 52 weeks in the table, in this example, uh, we have in total, if you sum all the numbers, you will get a total of 610 magazines, which is sold during a year. Uh, we can say that this is 1 divided by the number of weeks, in this case 52, multiplied by the sum for from 1 and up to the number of weeks of the demand in each week. Uh, which again, if we sum all the numbers in this table, all the sales of that magazines in 
all the 52 weeks, we get a total of 610. And then the average will be 610 divided by 52, which will give an average of 11.73. And this is a mathematical number. Of course, you, you won't sell 11.73 uh, units of this magazine. But this is a mathematical number which, can be, uh, which should be used when you should calculate the uh, you should calculate the, um, the cost of a certain uh, strategy. So here, in this example, you will sell on average 11.73 units of that weekly magazine. And we can also find what we call the, the variance, which is defined to be in the statistics. It is 1 when we have a sample variance. We are talking about 1 divided by n minus 1. If you have a, uh, are talking about the, the variance for uh, the whole uh, population, then we might skip minus 1 here. But uh, since we are talking about the variance for a sample uh, of uh, the population, or the population, or the all different outcomes, and we have the outcomes for the previous years. But we should also talk about the variance in, in, in whole, which will include the next year and, and, uh, and all the, the coming years and so on. So we will find the variance as 1 mi uh, divided by n minus 1 multiplied by the sum of all the outcomes in the variance minus the expected demand, shown like this, and to the power of 2. So here you will look at the outcome in one particular week, uh, and then you should subtract the average demand, which in this case is 11.73, and take the power of 2. And then you should make the sum for all the possible outcomes, all the outcomes in 52 weeks in the previous year. Subtract from that value, the average value here, and to the power of 2. And at last you should divide by n minus 1. This is called the variance, and the variance is also defi defined to be the standard deviation to the power of 2, or the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So this is some typical statistical measures. And then the standard deviation and the variance are used to measure the deviation from the expected uh, demand. Uh, and in this case, if we are calculating the variance, you will get or the standard deviation you, uh, on, on this particular problem. Take all the 52 outcomes in the table from the previous years. Subtract the expected D, or 11.73, and take it to the power of 2. And sum all these numbers, divide by n minus 1. And then find the sta standard deviation by taking the square root of the variance, and you will get a standard deviation of 4.74. Also, standard deviation is often denoted as the Greek letter of sigma. So here, this sigma will mean the same as the S here for the standard deviation of this, um, for, for this particular problem, the, the deviation for all the 52 outcomes uh, compared to the average or the expected demand. Uh, so, and this is, uh, uh, in this example, where you have 52 weeks, we have created uh, uh, some kind of uh, a histogram here. And we have also calculated the probability according to if the outcome would be exactly the same next year. If you would have a probability of 1 out of 52 of an outcome of 0, no probability of, of all at 
the outcomes of 1, 2, and 3. Probability of 3 divided by 52 of 4, and so on. But of course, this is probably not the situation. Because this is one particular year, the outcomes in one particular year, and you cannot expect that this will also be exactly the same what will happen next year. Maybe instead of an outcome of zero and three outcomes of four, you might have an outcome of one, and one outcome of three, and two outcomes of, of four, for example, which will still give the same average or same expected demand, but will give another probability for the different uh, outcomes here. So now, instead of talking an, uh, about an exact probability for each possible outcome, we can talk about a probability distribution, which is also something you probably have learned in statistics uh, courses. Uh, we will now focus on what we call the normal distribution, the distribution which is most common, uh, at least the, well, the basic uh, distribution which is uh, used in, in our models. And there we are talking about a symmetric curve with a top at some point here. And this is at the average or the expected demand. So you will have the highest probability at this top point, which is the expected demand, which here is the same as the average demand, 11.73. And then you will have a lower probability if you are going in either, or either direction from this one. So if you have, since this curve is symmetric, then if you have a deviation of one from the average demand, either in negative or positive direction, the probability will be the same, because the value of this curve will be at the same level. Uh, the normal distribution is a curve, symmetric, looks like, like this. Then you will always have the expected demand at the top of this curve. But the standard deviation is what will tell you how this will look like. If you have a very high standard deviation, it might look like this. You have still the top point here at the, the expected demand, but you have a quite high probability of a large deviation from the expected demand. Uh, the opposite, if you have a small standard deviation, a small uh, also means a small variance. This means that the probability of an outcome very close to the expected demand is rather high. Then you will have a situation looking like this. So here, in any uh, probability distribution, you will have the top point of the curve at the, the expected demand, the mu value, and the standard deviation will tell you how much is the probability for a deviation uh, from this uh, expected uh, demand. If you have a low standard deviation, it means that the probability for the mu value or any number very close to that one is very high. If you have a high standard deviation, you will have a high probability of getting an outcome which is far away from, from the expected value. So now, instead of using this particular values as an exact probability for each outcome, if we were analyzing the outcomes last year, this would be the exact probability. But now we want to use this and use the standard deviation to find uh, models and calculate the optimal policy for the coming year or for the coming periods uh, when you have a given probability function here. You have the expected demand and you have the standard deviation. So let's assume that the expected demand and the standard deviation will be the same, but the exact 
outcomes, which is shown here from the previous year, will not necessarily be the same outcomes that will happen the next year. <coughs> So, let's now try to analyze this problem, the Newsboy problem, or in this case, the, uh, the weekly magazine problem, which is, uh, well, can be seen as uh, variants over the, the same problem. You have to sell this magazine in the same week, otherwise you will lose some money. And then the exact uh, cost and the exact price and the exact uh, return value will of course be, be different in, in different situations. But now the problem is in these types of, of problem we should decide how many magazines should we order at the beginning of each week uh, to get uh, the highest possible profit given the probability function shown here. Given an expected demand and a uh, standard deviation or variance which is calculated from the hi uh, historical results and assumed to con continue into the future. We could of course buy enough to meet the average demand, which in this case we'll see that, that we will round to 12 and buy 12 magazines every day, uh, every week. But then of course in half of the weeks you have a higher demand than 12. And since the profit is higher, you will earn more money if you are selling a magazine that you will lose if you are not selling a magazine, then the obvious conclusion is that you should order more than 12. Uh, another strategy is to order as many magazines that will be certain to meet the demand or uh, the maximum value in uh, the previous year was 22. You have not sold more than 22 in any uh, week. Then we can assume that 22 is the maximum value that you will sell and buy 22 uh, items or 22 units of, of this, uh, uh, this magazine every week. But then, of course, you will in 51 of the 52 weeks, you have to return someone and you will lose money on those who, who you are not able to sell. So the exact or the optimal value will be somewhere with the, between these two values, either the average value, which is rounded to 12, or the maximum value, which is rounded to be 22. And now we are defining these two uh, parameters here which is uh, one, the overage cost, the unit cost of overage. How much will it cost you to order more items that you are actually selling? And also the underage cost, the cost, unit cost of underage, how much it will cost you in the loss of profit if you have not ordered enough and you have a demand, you, uh, one customer comes and tries to buy the magazine and you are out of stock. So then you will lose the profit for that particular um, or, or these items which you are not able to sell. So then looking at the definitions here, we see that the CO uh, is the difference between the purchase cost and the return cost. We should probably here, yeah, we know that the purchase cost was 0 0.20, 0 0.25, we had a sales price of 0 0.50 and we had a return value of 0 0.1. So here, overage cost, how much it will cost you if you are not selling a magazine which you already have bought. And this is the p-value, what you pay for the magazine, 25 cents, minus the return value, 10 cents, what you will get if you will sell this magazine to a used bookstore or anything, if you sell it to a reduced price. 
So then in our example, the overage cost will be 15 cents, the difference between the purchase cost and the return value. And the underage cost will be the loss of profit if you are not able to sell a magazine which is demanded. If a customer comes and tries to, to, uh, to buy the magazine and you are out of stock. Difference between the sales price and the purchase price. In this case, this should be 75 as I remember. So then you will have S minus P will be 0 0.50 50 cents. Loss of profit if you are not able to sell this magazine. <coughs> so this can also be seen as the penalty for not meeting a demand. Uh, and this is now larger, so you will lose more in profit if you are not able to sell a magazine than you will lose if you have bought too many magazines. So now, intuitively in this example, we should buy more than the average, more than 12, because the CU value is higher than the CO value. Uh, and to find the optimal value to buy, we should find what we call the critical ratio. <coughs> and the critical ratio is defined to be the underage cost divided by the sum of the underage and the overage cost. CU50 divided by the sum of CO and CU, 50 plus uh, 15 cents, uh, which gives a total critical ratio of 50 divided by 65, which is 0 0.77. 77%. This is the critical ratio, which means we should try to find a strategy where we are meeting the demand in 77% of the situations. Meeting the demand, looking at the normal distribution curve again, we have the curve looking like this. It is symmetric. And we know that 50% is below the midpoint, so we'll have a 50% uh, probability of getting an outcome which is lower than the expected demand. And then you should find the point here, which we can call the k value, which defines where the cumulative probability is 77%. The area uh, below the normal distribution curve, the total area will always be 1. And we should now find the point here, the k value, where the area up to that point will be 77%. Which also means that the area over this point will be 23%. 1 minus 0.77. Um, yeah, this is also what is calculated here, normal distribution uh, or normal uh, the, the expected value 11.73, the sigma standard deviation 4.74 and the critical fractile or, or the critical ratio which is 77%, uh, which is also shown here. The shaded area here are 0.77 or 77% of the total area below the normal distribution curve. <coughs> and now is the question, how should we find this k value? Or in this case it's also called the, the q, q value because the q will be the order size and since this is the value which we should try to find, how many items should we order every week or every period? 
when you have a normal distribution you can use the normal distribution table which is a well, well-known statistical table which gives you the probabilities in the normal uh, normal distribution uh, if you have a normal distribution for given numbers of uh, uh, of uh, standard uh, deviation or with uh, sorry it is possible to to calculate the deviation when you know the standard deviation uh, table a1 is at the back page 755 in your textbook and here we can see before we take the, the break we can try to look at this one and we can see that here we are talking about the area from the midpoint which is here assumed to be zero in our case it is 11.73 but this is very easy to um, uh, to change just to, just to, to uh, displace this curve around the, uh, the line here. So the C value here, or the K value, which I have called it, will now be the value which gives the shaded area here. And then we know that we have 50% of the area, which is lower than the expected value. So now we are looking for the value, which is 0 0.77 minus 50. And this is 0 0.27. And we should have to look in this paper, uh, in this table, to find the value which is closest to 0 0.27, which is this one. 0 0.2703. And if you add 50%, which is lower than 0 here, you get 0 0.7703, which is very close to what we are looking for. And then the C value found here, which I call the, the K value, can be found by looking at this number, which happens at a C value of 0 0.7. And then the 100 parts are here at 0 0.74, where this value is placed. The decimals, or the, the tenth, are shown in the column and the hundreds are shown in the row. Okay, let's take a break and then continue in this example in 15 minutes.